guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about heat patina. And it's so simple. Really all it is, is using your mini torch to create color on brass and copper. Have you ever lit a Bic? Then you can use a mini torch. It's just that easy. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm a little bit afraid of the big boys toys, but I'm not afraid of using my torch. I don't do a lot of soldering with it, but I do use it a lot to do heat patina. It's fast, it's simple, it's a great way to get a little color on a bit of brass. And I think we may have talked about it a while ago, but I've done so many videos now I have to review them to see. But what got me started this last week was my friend Shirley Wilson came in to see me and she wanted a cuff, an indent cuff that we carry at bcboutiques.com. But she wanted it in brass ox and I was out of them. And I thought, well, I'll make her one. Because I knew if I hit that brass cuff in raw, because I did have them in raw brass, if I hit that with some heat, it'd get real pretty and bronzy. So she was real tickled with it, and uh, I think Shirley will be getting a torch herself real soon. And maybe if you haven't yet, you will be too after you see what I do. So step on over here with me, and I'll show you what I do. So this is my torch that I use. It is a Blazer ES-1000. I'm sure if you go on Amazon.com, you'll find one that's for a deal. That's why I don't carry them, because I can't beat their price a lot of times. Um, so, you know, go get one. Don't be without it. If you can't find one, please let me know. I can get you one. It's going to be somewhere between 40 and 50 bucks, okay? Um, but if you can get it for cheaper, hey, go for it. I would. Um, when you get one, it's not going to come with any fuel in it, okay? It can't be shipped like that. You have to go to the hardware store and you have to get fuel. You'll see on this one, see this little orifice here? This is where you fill it. You would be filling it with something like this. This is kind of generic. But when I uncap this, you'll see there's like a little nozzle here. Lay your blazer down on its side and insert it into the orifice. I am not going to fill this now because this is full. Okay, so I'm not doing it. But basically, you just get it in there squarely and jam it. Do not pump it. If you have a better way to do it, I'm happy for you. This is how I do it. This is what works for me. So, you know, you could maybe go look at some other YouTube videos and see how other people do it. This works really well for me, doing it on the side this way. Okay. If you get it overfilled, you might want to go look up Rob Perry's Facebook page and you'll see Mr. Flame Face because it's going to come out all over the place. And that's another reason why I'm not doing this here because I don't want to get Mega Flame flying all over this workshop. But if you fill it properly, you get a pinpoint flame, which is very, very small and nothing to worry about. You have to have a soldering block. That's what this is. Okay, this is a piece of marble here that I have under it. Um, this is what I do. Okay, but this is a soldering block. Some people like to put them on a cookie sheet. That you could do too. This works for me because this flame, as you can see, you're going to see, it's really small. So I lift this little doohickey here up on the back on this version of it. And then I simply turn it on. So you can see it's very, very small flame. And then there's this little red thing here to lock. So now I can take my finger off of it and I don't have to get a cramp in my finger. So now this is a raw brass indent cuff and it's from bsuboutiques.com. We do have a bunch of them in stock. I don't know, there must be 25 of them anyway left. Sold a number of them this week and we're always getting more. But as you can see, this is starting to turn. I don't know, Rob, can you get in there and let them see a little bit better? Because I really want them to see. Do you know, um, brass is part copper and that's why we're getting this real pretty reddish but when this cools down it's going to be more dark bronzy and I have an example that I've been working on that I can actually show you but this is brass this is a, a brass piece you're getting some blue in there and you can kind of swirl it around if you get your flame too close um, it kind of stifles it you know and it doesn't do it so you gotta stay back a little bit and you can go inside too but you'll find that you really don't have to the heat from the outer side kind of goes through 
but this is kind of getting to the place where I like it to be. I kind of like it about there because I know from experience what it's going to look like when it cools down. So I'm going to quit. So now what I'm going to do, leave your flame on there, okay, press off, press your little doohickey down, and you're done, okay. Let me reach over here and get my player so I can pick it up because don't touch it. It's really, really super hot. Okay, so I'm going to kind of grab it by the back here and let you get a good look. And now, see, I missed a little edge, but see, you could do it again. Just turn it on the other side and just do it again. You can see what it looks like inside, that beautiful rainbow color. Again, this is raw brass. And when it cools, I can set it back here. It's going to be all right. Yeah. When it cools, it's going to look kind of like this. And there are some uneven marks in this. I may treat this yet a little bit with some alcohol ink, whoops, or some Gilder's paste. Um, what I like to do is take, like, excuse me, a little sponge and put a little bit of the um, gold paints, even acrylic, and just kind of dip dot it. I'll show you an example of when I've done that. This one behind me. This one's all finished. And this is one that I did the other day that I actually did the sponge over top of it. So that's really a cool finish. You can see what it looks like inside. So you have a lot of options there. Once you do the patina, you can add even a little bit more color with your mixed media products. You can even do iced enamels over it. Or you could do, like I said, Gilder's Paste. I did Lumiere with this. Um, your vintage inks, whatever, you know, float your boat. Go for it. So this one isn't done yet, but I'll probably put a bunch of dangly stuff on it because I did rivet this and put this little turtle back on, and I put some things through this, and I'm probably going to wrap it with some wire and probably hang some stuff, but you can see where I'm going with it. And if you want to do some viewing on root riveting, I do have a video if you go way back how to rivet with the tube rivet. There's a good video on that, so you could go back and review that rather than me taking time to show you again here because we'll just go too long. But I'm going to show you a little bit more about using the torch. Um, you might be noticing this in the background, all the beautiful rainbow colors that I got on this piece. This is our dimpled cuff, and this one was actually sent to me by the tooler in pure solid copper. I do not carry this very often. I have maybe 10 of them here still. Um, they went out in the Muse packages this week, so people got them in the Muse packages. But um, I don't usually carry a lot of copper, but Jesus, this is gorgeous. I'm thinking maybe I should. <laughs> Uh, of course, cop the copper would cost more than the brass, and this is a heavy piece, but Donna was wearing this. Pretty, huh? Now, I sealed this. You have to seal heat patina. If you don't, it's a bit transient. How to seal it? I do it very simply. I use this product. Krylon Matte Finish. Spray lacquer. Okay? And, of course, if you're using this, you don't want it anywhere near your flame, because kapow. Not a good idea. That's why I had it way over here. That's what you use. Spray it inside, spray it outside. I take it outside. I have an old rack outside that I do it on. And you're good to go. If you want, you could do a little bit of jewelry shield over top, which is this product. And we carry it at bisuboutiques.com. Um, sometimes not a bad idea to paint the inside where it touches skin. Just, you know, to prevent allergies and stuff. I use this as a sealant sometimes too. It's um, kind of a quick thing to use. But anyway, this is solid copper. It shows that you can see the difference. I don't want to touch that yet because it's so hot. You can see the difference. Okay, we're going to do just a little bit more. We're going to do these little earring dangles. Okay, so I'm going to put them on here. And then after I hit them and get them hot, I'm going to show you how I add a little bit of texture to them. Okay, so once again, I'm going to make sure that anything that might, you know, be dangerous like Krylon spray lacquer is nowhere in sight. You get it on your soldering block, lift the little thing in the back, and press it down, and start. Now these aren't going to take anywhere near as long to get color on as, say, your cuff. And the thing about raw brass, 
You just never quite know what you're going to get. Just like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. As you can see, the one here, I've got a really beautiful even patina right away, but it took a little bit of doing to get this. Now sometimes what I do on these thinner pieces, these are about 24 gauge brass, is let them go to red. See how they're going to red? That means they're super, super, super hot. Okay, I'm done. That's it. That's all I want on that. Now, these are super hot, but can you see how they're cooling down already and they're becoming kind of black? Well, what I'm going to want to do now, because these don't have any texture on them and I want some texture on them, I'm going to very carefully lift this up and I'm going to take and I'm going to put it here on my steel bench block. Do not touch this because like I say, it's really hot, but see, that's a good thing right now because being this is how it's so hot, I can take this texture hammer and I can put some really cool texture in this because the metal is real soft right now, so I'm going to do that. Now I might need to hold it a little bit, so I'll just put my pliers on here and I'm going to start tapping it. And if you have a better way of doing this, great. Share it with us at the Bisu Boutique's creative group because we're all ears. I'm always... I'm always glad to know a better way. This could have cooled down a little bit first, and I still could have done this. It doesn't have to be hot. It's just I'm finding I get a little bit nicer, funky texture in it. So I'm using kind of a basket weave star type pattern. These are so cool too because we have these hammers on the site. Um, you can go either end, and this thing here screws off. and this can come off and you can put different tips on it. I like this one really a lot. It's a good, good heavy hammer for doing stuff like this. And you can get, you know, funky random patterns. You could do like this pattern and then you could do another one or whatever. So anyway, that's how you do it, but to show you what it looks like when it's finished, because that's hot and I don't want to touch it, this is what it looks like when it's finished. If I can get it on the white I took steel wool and went over this and took a little bit of that black off after I texturized it. But it's got a really, really neat pattern on it. And so now I'll use these and I'll make me some, some really pretty earrings out of that. That's cool, huh? Yeah, I like that. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. And I'm also going to take my other piece off this bench block. Another thing that you could use, I'm not going to do it right now for lack of time, basically the same way as you did the cuff here, you can do one of these necklace crescents that we sell at visuboutiques.com. They're under the blank section. This is what I did with heat patina and the texture hammer. And then I added a little bit of gilder's paste to it to just bring up a little blue in it. And then I put a little bit of jewelry shield over top of it as a lacquer. So it's pretty just like that. You could just add just a few little accents or maybe one of those tassels that we made the other day on the last video um, to here and you could have a really cool, funky, metally looking piece. Metally. What a word. Anyway, I try. Okay guys, so I hope you'll get hold of a torch. Don't be afraid of it. You just use common sense and safety. Don't have anything aerosol nearby. Get the kids out of the way. They don't belong there when you're doing it. Um, keep your flame directly on your soldering block. Um, you know, be careful not to overfill it. You know, just basic safety stuff. And it's, it's basically like, you know, using a lighter. So if you've done that, you're good to go. Have fun and come to the Bisu Boutique's creative group and share with us some of the things you've done because we love to share there and we'd love to see what you're doing. So you have a great day.